Good morning, all commencing and existing students of the Faculty of Law and Justice. My name is Helen, and I'm the Director of the Undergraduate Studies for the LLB, the Undergraduate Law Program. I would like to acknowledge the Bedigal people that are the traditional custodians of this land. I would also like to pay my respects to the elders, both past and present, and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who are present here today. Now, you might ask yourself, um, what does the Director of Undergraduate Studies do specifically? Or more importantly, you might ask, what can the Director of Undergraduate Studies do for me? And that would be a fair question, since I've been in this role for two years, and I still can't quite answer it myself, because the role seems to change with each new passing crisis, of which we've had a fair share of those in recent years. But what I do know is a constant, is that the role is student-facing. As the LLB program director, I provide support to undergraduate law students, and I have a counterpart in the JD law program and the criminology program. Um, Dr. Elise McGovern, you'll, you'll meet shortly. So you can contact me directly if you need advice regarding your program progression. If you need support, contacting UNSW support services, including the Equitable Learning Service, or if you have any really tricky questions um, about your law courses or the assessment or questions about the faculty's policies and procedures, um, the, anything that's sort of more difficult or more challenging that goes past your course teacher or the course convener. You might contact me if you're considering appealing a decision um, about special consideration, for example, or need advice on the UNSW's complaints process, hopefully not. So, um, often I'm the person that uh, LLB students talk to when things aren't going quite right, um, unfortunately. So as a general rule, you really want as little to do with me as possible, um, sort of more like lawyers generally. However, another aspect of my role is celebrating your achievements. This is my f the favourite part of my role. And earlier this week I had the privilege of writing to one of your peers to pass on the collective congratulations of the faculty since he had topped six of his eight courses in 2022. Um, a remarkable achievement that didn't go unnoticed by us in the faculty. So for those of you um, new to UNSW today, myself and my colleagues who you will meet today, get to enjoy the opportunity to celebrate one of your biggest achievements um, thus far at law school, and that is commencing. Commencing law school is an amazing achievement, as um, Andrew said, getting here has been the result of a lot of hard work on your part to this point. Congratulations and welcome to UNSW Law and Justice. And th for those of you who are continuing, hello again. Um, it's lovely to see so many of you here today. Now I've been asked to give you some advice about your law programs. Um, and on the way up here, I was thinking of something else. For those of you who are doing combined degrees, and so you might have a law class in the pr law building and then another class up at this end of campus, or for those of you in your criminology degree and you have a class in the law building and something up here in, in the arts faculty, wear comfortable shoes. It's a long way up the hill, <laughs> and I'm wearing very uncomfortable shoes today. So, my, more seriously, my advice, um, my first bit of advice would be to second the recommendation given to you by Andrew, um, which I knew he would say that. This is why I've predicted that he would say. So get involved in the many exciting opportunities the university has, and that the faculty has, um, and that the faculty has to offer outside of the classroom. After the last few years impacted so heavily by COVID-19, including online learning, this is especially important. But I would also like to. to encourage you to be excited about the new friends that you're going to make at law school. For those of you entering the first term of the first year of your program, you might be a bit nervous. Um, you really don't know what to expect. You probably don't know anyone else yet, but I assure you, you this will change as soon as your classes start. The other students that you will meet this term will become some of your best friends very quickly. As described by the wonderful Professor Prue Vines, who you will meet during your program, um, when I started my LLB here in U at UNSW many years ago, and she said, look to the left and look to the right, and the people that you're sitting next to will be still your best friends in a nursing home in about 60 years. And it is true, some of my best and closest friends are those who I met at law school. 
Law School is not just about learning law, it's about building and nurturing support um, and, and a network of people who get it. People who are going through the same thing as you who understand how challenging law school can be at times. Also, while we're talking about new friends, fall in love while you're at law school. Um, I married a boy from law school, so you just don't know what opportunities UNSW Law and Justice has in store for you. <laughs> um, the friendships, as I said, the friendships will get you through the hard times and they will make law school the most enjoyable time of, of your life. My second bit of advice is to start good reading habits early. You've probably heard that there is a lot of reading in law school. That is true, and at times it may feel overwhelming, and it is. But staying on top of the readings is important. That is not to say that you must read every word and understand every word before you go to class, but at a minimum you should have a good sense of what the readings are about and what the main points are. Um, you should set yourself achievable reading goals each week and stick to them. But don't use, you know, sometimes life happens um, and you may fall behind, but don't use that as an excuse. Come back to the readings when you have a chance, um, especially during the assessment period when, when students tend to focus on assessment rather than, rather than readings. Um, my strong advice is to manage your time well. Allocate time for reading and time for working on your assessments and prioritise sleep and your health. And of course, don't leave your assessments to the last minute. Law school is just as much about learning um, how to manage your time and the competing demands on your time as it is learning about the law. My final bit of advice um, builds on the very important habit of doing your readings and being prepared for class, and that is I encourage you from the very first day to participate in your class discussions. It is likely that you chose Law and Justice for our distinctive teaching model our interactive seminar style discussion based classes um, where everyone sits around and talks and talks about the readings are heavily based on your own interpretation of the readings and, and discussing it with your peers and your teacher. So being prepared for class by having done the readings is the best way in, to feel confident to participate in class. For some of you that will be really easy, for others it will be daunting, but I assure you the more you do it, the more you practice, the easier it will get. The classroom is a very safe learning environment. There are no wrong answers. I know some of you will be too scared to say something in case you say something wrong. There are no wrong answers. The teacher is um, not looking for a particular answer, but really that you've thought about the issue and that you're just prepared to have a go. The um, assessments, such as midterm assignments and exams, are where your teachers are looking for you to demonstrate knowledge. In the classroom, we are all learning. I look forward to meeting you at some point as you progress through your degree, and I welcome you again. Uh, I will welcome you again in your second year of your program when you come to study criminal law with me. Um, it is now my absolute pleasure to pass on to my counterpart program director um, of the BCCJ, Associate Professor Elise McGovern. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's nice to see so many faces after a few years of uh, very virtual uh, delivery of classes and so forth. And so nice to meet some of you this morning when we had a coffee catch up. Uh, my name is Elise McGovern. I am the Director of Undergraduate Studies for the Criminology Program here, the Bachelor of Criminology and Criminal Justice. Uh, like the Dean and Helen, I'd also like to begin by acknowledging that we're on Aboriginal lands. Uh, and those lands have never been ceded. In particular, I'd like to acknowledge the Bidjigal people, who are the traditional custodians of the land on which UNSW Kensington camps, campus is built. I pay respects to elders past and present and extend that respect and acknowledgement to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders joining us today. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. And I think this is a critical starting point for all conversations that we have in this faculty that is committed to justice. Uh, now, I won't sort of repeat uh, some of Helen's points about the role of the program director, um, but you know, suffice to say that I'm a point of contact for students. If you're getting stuck at any point or if you need some advice or insights as you're progressing through your degree program, um, and hopefully someone that you'll see on a regular basis, not just in the classroom, but in other activities that we engage with for students. It's a real honour to welcome everyone here today and I want to congratulate you all for 
The exceptional efforts that it's taken to get here, as we've all acknowledged, the last uh, three years have been challenging in many respects, and it's great to welcome you all to the UNSW community. And, you know, as everyone has said, and I want to reiterate, just to really embrace the opportunities that the community provides. If you're studying criminology and criminal justice, it's an exciting time to join our program. We are quite a unique program um, nationally, and we're really committed to preparing our students to make a difference in the world. At the heart of the program's identity is a distinctiveness um, and a commitment to not only delivering excellent research-informed, social justice-focused courses of issues of real uh, importance in contemporary society, but also connecting the knowledge that you learn through your degree to really practical skills that you can apply uh, that knowledge to both in the classroom and beyond. And that knowledge and skills in things like policy and practice and research really draw from the expertise that cut across both faculties. So here in the Faculty of Law and Justice and also with our counterparts, um, particularly in the School of Social Sciences, which deliver quite a number of courses in the core of the program. We take really seriously our uh, obligation to imagine a more just future and to contribute to public and political debate about how to achieve more just outcomes for those upon whose uh, the systems uh, bear harshly upon. This starts in the classroom with our core criminology courses and we really engage in debates about issues of current and ongoing criminological concern. But the imagination is not where it ends. We also seek to equip students and graduates with the capacity to translate this criminological imagination into practice. We see you all as the next generation of practitioners, reformers, activists, and we saw some examples of that early today, scholars as well. And we seek to provide you with in-depth training in the conduct of social science research. The commitment that is embedded in our program through the second core of uh, social science courses is really uh, equipping students with knowledge around policy making, practice, and qualitative and quantitative research methods. And so they're really the places where you're able to see how the knowledge that you've gained can be applied uh, out in the real world. These skills are further extended in the double degree offerings. So some of you here might be doing the Bachelor of Criminology and Criminal Justice alongside social work or even alongside law. Your classes will be delivered by scholars and practitioners from a range of disciplines. Criminology really is a very interdisciplinary area of research and study. So from fields such as history, social work, public health, policy, law, youth work, and of course, those who have a background in criminology and criminal justice. And we're really engaged in quite groundbreaking and critically engaged research, as you'll get to learn uh, throughout your time here at UNSW. Uh, in your first year course, they'll be delivered by a mix of face-to-face -face and online classes. Uh, including lectures and tutorials. So we do have a, a kind of range of delivery modes for your, your classes and they will change as you move through the degree. And they will be supported by structured learning activities, so things that you might have to do before you come to class to help prepare you for the conversations that you might be having in your tutorial rooms. Alongside that, there's readings. Obviously, Helen mentioned readings before. There's also a lot of reading in our um, courses too, but they really, uh, those readings are really designed to add some depth to your understanding of the topics that we cover from week to week. So it's really important that you engage with this material to get the most out of your studies. And as Helen said, you know, time management, keeping on top of your readings is a really important skill to harness as you work through your degree. So to prepare for your courses and your time in the program, I really encourage everyone to be intellectually curious. Uh, engage with the news and current affairs. I mean, a day does not go by that we hear about crime and criminal justice issues in the news. So pay attention to those things. Those contemporary issues are things that we really want to be bringing into our conversations in the classroom. Um, follow leading activist scholars. Uh, you can follow the Dean on Instagram, for example, and you can hear about what, what is happening in the faculty there as well. Um, listen to podcasts. Uh, pay attention to the organisations that are working in justice fields and are really um, helping to inform and change practice on the ground. Um, but sign up to email lists as well. 
keep an eye out for events. We're running a number of events, um, obviously this week and next week, but going on through the term and through the year, there'll be a number of events for our criminology students uh, to engage in. And as uh, Helen said, don't be afraid to ask questions. Seek out help from the academics teaching you. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you uh, learn and we want to see you succeed. Uh, and there's many support services available at UNSW and the faculty specifically that you can draw on. Finally, and most importantly, I know many of you have already done this, but please join the CRIM Society, CRIMSOC. Uh, Reese, who's at the back of the room, is the president, and I know he's really looking forward to um, having the membership expand. I know many of you have already signed up. They've got a number of great events coming up, and um, I think it'll be great to see uh, many of you get involved in those as well. And they also offer a number of things. So there's a peer support and peer mentoring programs that they offer and some career oriented activities and services. And that can help you navigate university because you know, people are often concerned, what is the career direction I'm taking? So um, I'll end it there, but welcome again. Um, look forward to seeing many of you in classes in coming weeks. I will now pass back to Andrew. Uh, thanks, Elise and Helen. Uh, it's great, uh, loaded with great advice. Uh, uh, when, we're not going to hear from Brooke Johnson, but I really wanted to uh, share her name and, uh, and a photo of her with you. Brooke is the uh, newly appointed careers manager in Law and Justice. Uh, the faculty created a careers office in about 2015, uh, and I might even just um, move, to, move to that one. How can I get, can you get me to the next, that's the one, thanks. Um, the, the career service uh, is quite unusual for uh, faculty uh, for law and criminology degrees in Australia. Um, in the US it's a much more common feature of higher education. And really the idea of the careers office is to assist students um, so that we're not just here preparing you for your career, uh, by teaching, but also thinking about what is some of the work experience or other volunteer or opportunities you might take during your degree that will prepare you for when you leave us and go to wherever it is you want to go. Um, so uh, Brooke is the manager of that team, Trina Robinson is the careers advisor and is available for one-on-one -on -one appointments. Um, and we've really been pleased with the impact that the careers service has had and we're really excited that Brooke's joined us. She comes from a, a diverse range of professional experience, including in law firms, um, but also in the corporate sector. Uh, and we think that's really part of our responsibility to you as students, is to obviously work on your intellectual development and academics and, and skills attainment, but also to start thinking, and you can never really start thinking early enough about what do I want to achieve while I'm here? Okay, so have a look at the careers information that's online and get in touch with the service uh, at a time that suits you. Uh, all right, uh, so we're moving now uh, to our guest speaker, uh, and it's a real pleasure to welcome back to UNSW Philippa Meikle. Philippa is an alumna of the faculty, graduating with a combined degree in law and international studies in 2020. And during her time here, Philippa was heavily involved in career and community networks within the faculty. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a Law Society director uh, and camp leader to engagement roles within UNSW Student Equity and Disabilities Unit and the UNSW Student Legal Education Group. Philippa also volunteered and worked at the Redfern Legal Centre and gained early experience in the profession as a clerk at Kingwood Mallisons and a research assistant uh, at Barristers Chambers. She's also worked as a researcher to the Court of Appeal since leaving us before moving to her current role as a solicitor in the New South Wales Crown Solicitor's, Solicitor's Office. You'd think as Dean of Law I could say that without tripping. Uh, and it's a real pleasure to welcome her back because Philippa made the most of her time uh, at UNSW and although she is a holder of a law degree, a lot of what she is going to say was just as applicable to you if you're in the BCCJ as well. Please help me welcome Philippa back. I would like to begin by acknowledging the Bedigal people that are the traditional custodians of this land. I would like to also repay my respects to the elders, both past and present, and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who are present here today. These lands and waters were stolen and never ceded. This land always was and always will be Aboriginal land. 
I was going to start my speech with a little bit of an introduction about why I'm here and why I'm speaking to you, um, but I think the Dean did an excellent job of that. Um, I, I did graduate from UNSW only a few years ago. I fortunately was able to escape the pandemic, um, but my graduation ceremony was delayed by about two years because of the pandemic, so it will hit you at some point, I'm sure, again, during the course of the degree. And the great thing about a law degree is that it it really teaches you how to um, respond to the challenges that arise, completely unexpected, um, and each year I'm sure will bring a new challenge to, to overcome over the course of the many years that you will spend here at UNSW. Um, so as a brief overview, as the Dean had said, I did graduate from UNSW with a Bachelor of Law with First Class Honours and a Bachelor of International Studies with Distinction, and I was also named the UNSW Law's Valedictorian in 2019. In 2020, I worked as the researcher to the Court of Appeal in the now Chief Justice Bell's Chambers, and I've just finished the two-year graduate program at the Crown Solicitor's Office, where I plan to stay for the foreseeable future. I was known um, amongst my friends for being one of the most involved in university life, especially for having to try, you know, having a go at everything, trying everything once, um, to see where my passions and skills lay. I definitely tried a few things where my skills um, were probably a bit lacking and I thought I'd, you know, I'd dedicate my time elsewhere. Um, and there are probably some things that I stuck to for a bit longer than I probably should have and I should have admitted defeat a bit earlier um, so that I could have, you know, dedicated my time to something which would have been a bit more productive. I would say the debating society was maybe one of those. Um, one of the best opportunities I think that you can take of advantage of while you're at university is overseas experiences. I undertook a year-long exchange in the UK in my second year, which was one of the best years of my life. While I was only studying subjects for my other degree, which was a Bachelor of International Studies, um, this, embarrassingly enough, made me miss law school so much that I became sure that my passion was in the law. Um, I did have a few friends who felt the exact opposite. They were relieved they didn't have to study law for the time that they were on exchange. Some of my friends tried to extend their exchange while they were overseas to avoid coming back to study contracts and whatnot. Um, and some of them ended up um, leaving their law degree and transferring out um, when they realised that maybe their time wasn't, wasn't dedicated to something that they weren't that passionate about. I also organised my own overseas master's course in Bosnia and Herzegovina studying transitional justice, which was tricky um, administratively to organise, but I couldn't recommend it more highly. If you see something um, or hear about an opportunity that hasn't yet been recognised by the university, the law school was really helpful in getting that recognised um, and it, it was basically um, treated as an elective and, and recognised within my law program. I also attended the law school's elective in Santiago in Chile, um, and this was a phenomenal way of traveling to South America. We ended up spending about a month there. Um, we had so much support from the university to get us there um, and help with the, logis the logistics involved in the visas required and things like that. And we all got to travel with our friends, um, but we only had to pay UNSW domestic fees for that subject, which was great. Um, there are a number of other overseas law elective opportunities that are available to you. I know that they fill up quite fast, um, and that's something that you know you'll come across later on your degree but I highly recommend thinking about trying to incorporate them into your program if that's something you think you might be interested in. I also did some internships such as the Human Rights Clinic which is run by the law school um, and actually sits in the law school building as well. We worked on refugee applications for RACs and produced a report on housing issues that are faced by international students who live in Sydney. I also completed an external internship at the Inspector of Custodial Services, where I got to visit some of the jails around New South Wales um, and gained a practical understanding of what a non-lawyer legal job could be. There are a number of internships that um, are advertised to you through UNSW Law School or through um, the Faculty of Arts as well, um, and you can go down those paths and investigate those, or you can also find external internships um, and apply to have those approved as well. The Law Society was my favourite society at UNSW. Um, I loved Law Camp when I was in first year um, and I met some of my closest friends there. Um, and then I returned four times as a leader. Um, I also went to every law ball, which can get quite expensive, but most of the time they are the best night of the year. So just try and see whether you're able to, you know, um, to financially commit to all of these different events um, because they're gr um, great ways of making friends um, that will last a lifetime. 
I was a mentee and a mentor for the first year law students through the Law Plus program. Um, and again, I've maintained friendships from this program for many years. A great thing about that program is that it connects you with students from other years in the degree. And it's always really helpful to have somebody to look up to when you're not sure how to navigate a particular course or your progression or anything like that. I also um, went to almost all of the Law Society events during my time at law school, um, especially in the first week, and met so many of my closest friends at these events. Um, there's a number of events that are based at, you know, um, about education or uh, just for social reasons, or learning more about the opportunities that are available um, at law school and at other societies and other schools at the, um, at the university. Um, and I highly recommend you fill your timetable with those wherever you can. Um, you will also have people from the Criminology Society and ARC and Law Review Society as well. Um, and I'm sure their events are just as great as the Law Society ones. Um, but I, I, there's only a few societies that I managed to fill my time with while I was at university. And I don't want to kind of um, step on other people's toes and talk about their societies too much. I participated in both internal mooting and negotiation competitions, as well as external competitions, such as the Castan Human Rights Moot, which was down in Melbourne, and USW um, helped me fund my way down there. Um, and the Administrative Appeals Tribunal Moot, um, which again, the university um, advertised internally and had um, kind of tryouts in order to be able to make the team. Um, and I think some of these opportunities are really great ways of giving you insight into possible options for your future career because they give you an indication of the kind of practical issues that you'll be dealing with if you, for example, were to practice law in that particular area. It's also a fantastic idea to get involved in societies that attract students from other degrees. Um, I was involved in the debating society, although that did not go so well for me because my skills were lacking. Um, the Model UN Society, Hockey, International Studies and Exchange Societies. They provided me with a wealth of friendships to keep you sane during your law degree. I think it's um, quite known that people at law and justice can be quite type A. So sometimes it's nice to just go hang out with the ski society where everybody just you know, hits the slopes on every second weekend. Um, and I think they can bring you down to earth a little bit. I also went to three uni games over my time for two different sports, and they were some of my favourite experiences at UNSW. They also involve travelling around either New South Wales or the eastern coast of Australia, um, and sometimes you can get some funding as well um, through whatever society you're a part of. I was also a wellbeing, social and cast member of the Law Review Society over the years, uh, and the bonds you form with your fellow reviewers will uh, follow you for life. Uh, the Law Review is kind of like a comedy um, skit, sketch show um, where you basically do a lot of um, training and rehearsal for a, a number of weeks, and it's pretty full on, and then you go and perform your show for about four nights uh, to the public, so you get all your friends and family along to cheer you on, um, and you don't need to be um, a, um, in any particular degree to be involved in any of the Law um, Review activities. Make sure you schedule in some non-university work-related things to do on campus in between or after your lectures to make sure you don't resent dragging yourself to university for your 9am lectures every day when the study gets really tough. Make sure you've got some fun things interspersed there. I also work for the university in a variety of capacities, including as a tutor at the Nurugili Centre and as a student ambassador, both of which were really flexible around uni classes. I used the university and law careers for services quite a lot during my time here, and I would highly recommend this. I had help in choosing which jobs to apply for, um, writing cover letters and practicing interview techniques. The job that I worked on at the Court of Appeal was advertised on the um, law career services page, and that was the only reason that I found out about it, so it's always worth um, having a check on that board, and the opportunities are available from first year through to after you graduate. There's so, also so many opportunities out there that I never took up, but that's totally okay. Some of my friends got really involved in the society of their other degree, um, like engineering or BSOC, um, or they got involved in the SRC, or they lived on college. Many of these activities were things that my friends would go to by themselves, and they formed great friendships from those activities. Um, and I think that's so important for building your sense of independence and networking skills. Um, so when you graduate, you end up with more than just um, a, a cohort of people who did the, the same degree as you. During my six years here, I dabbled in a few things. I started and stopped things. I popped in and out of activities, completed, completely committed to some things, and I totally hated others. It's a matter of trying as much as you can until you find your thing and sticking to that as long as it makes you happy. University is the best time to discover who you are, what you like, and what you need. 
You're here to study, but you're also here to have fun. So take up all the opportunities that you want. And while you can take ideas from other people, try not to compare yourself to anyone else. You're your own person on your own path. Have fun. Thanks, Philip. I particularly like that last bit, which is don't compare yourself to other people, because uh, whenever I hear about all that Philippa did, I feel so inadequate. Um, I've been here for a lot longer than six years, and I certainly was a, 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 I didn't make the most of the opportunities I had at the university I went to as an undergraduate student, and it's really great and inspirational to hear from her. Follow your interests, do stuff. Um, this takes us to the Plus Justice Festival, uh, which is something we're doing this year. It's an utterly new thing, and it is part of our COVID thinking because uh, we have actually really, really missed being on campus with colleagues and with students. And we wanted to mark the return to something approaching normal life by creating an event uh, for each year in the faculty and to build that around a particular theme. And so this is the very first year we're trialling this event, and you know, in some ways we're hoping it will take off with you. It's a bit of a let's see how we go um, and the idea is to put a central idea out there and for everybody across the faculty students staff alumni our visitors as well to kind of think about this theme throughout the year um, there's a website with information on it reading lists things to do films to watch and also opportunities for you to suggest what part of that theme resonates to you and what you think uh, we should all be reading or following uh, or discussing as part of this idea I've not done a great job explaining it. There's a video. Can we please have the video? Thanks. The Plus Justice Festival is a new initiative launched in 2023, opening dialogue between staff and students under the theme of hope. To me, the Plus Justice Festival is about bringing together students and staff to talk about ideas in a way that has absolutely nothing to do with the hierarchies of the classroom or the pressures of assessment. The festival is a chance for students and faculty to really connect after the last few years. I think students and staff will really develop and strengthen their sense of belonging and sense of community. Plus Justice Festival is an opportunity to come together around a central organising idea or theme uh, and to explore that in a variety of ways, sparking a whole heap of different conversations and about different topics that might fall within that theme. First and foremost, it's about enjoyment. So it's meant to be a way for us to actually get to know each other a lot better. It's to think about law beyond just the textbooks and what you need to do to pass an exam, but to think about what we're learning, the, our impact in the world and sort of your careers as you go out to work in the law or work around the law. What students can get out of this festival is an opportunity to move out of the mindset of the hustle and bustle of academic study and really get to engage with what the law actually means. I hope for the festival is that when people are in queues at the coffee shop, they'll be able to talk about events that they've been to or books that they're reading or films they're watching that are part of the theme. And so it's a way of having a common vocabulary uh, around this idea. Hope to me means never giving up and always finding a reason to look forward and continue going. Hope is really positive. It's about resilience, I think, and it's about really looking for and expecting something positive. Hope is one of these interesting topics because sometimes it's represented as a sort of naivety, an idea of, oh, why are you still hoping for the best? Can't you see the reality of the world around you? But I think hope is vital and necessary. We're facing a lot of very large challenges. Not just with COVID, but also climate change, racial injustice. And I think hope gives us a way to think of how we might move forward. Hope to me is the idea of striving for a better tomorrow. Hope is a pervading theme that should always be present in law, but sometimes we, we tend to overlook it because we focus on the things that law prohibits or law stops rather than what it can achieve. I think people will positively interact and engage with the theme of hope as a constant reminder of what we have achieved as a collective and what we can continue to achieve. The theme of hope is a really exciting one because I think we could all do with some. The world's got a whole heap of challenges and we often talk about them as challenges, issues or problems. But it's important to think about what we could look forward to in solving some of those. 
This year, we will be focusing on two main aspects of hope. Firstly, the hope that comes out of the Uluru Statement of the Heart, and the idea of enshrining the Indigenous voice of the First Nations within our constitution. The second is the idea of climate justice and climate action, where we are striving for a better tomorrow and a better place for all of us to live in. A final point I want to make clear to students in particular is to get involved. The festival will instigate conversations around justice, equality and hope, conversations that are crucial to our future and our education and conversations in which the festival will facilitate. For more information, you can go to the Plus Justice Festival website. So have a look at that, please. Give us your ideas. We want the festival to be something that's interesting to you. We've, we've lobbed some stuff out there. We hope it appeals, but we actually really want to feed off some of your suggestions as well and to make it as meaningful as possible. And we really hope to connect with you. There I go. I can't stop using the word hope through the Plus Justice Festival. Um, we're running a little bit over time, but we still have some really important business to cover and we also want to get to the, your questions. It's my pleasure to introduce Mitch McBurney from ARC to present about his work. Hey guys, lovely to meet all of you and thank you Andrew for the very warm welcome. I hope that I have a strong impact on you and I hope that you all remember lots of things from today. Um, I work for your student organisation which is called ARC. ARC doesn't stand for anything, it just arcs over a whole bunch of different stuff that we do for students. But our mission is to create the best student experience and that's going to mean something different to every single person. Philly managed to jam pack a lot of things into her, her degree. You don't have to do as many things as Philly but you can still do lots of really fun things while you're at UNSW, it's my job to tell you all about them today. We actually have this tagline that I heard Philly mention, which was, it's your chance to find your thing. And we didn't plan that, which was pretty cute. Um, but coming to university is an opportunity for you to dip your toe into lots of different things and discover what you like, follow your curiosities, follow your nose, etc. But sometimes, in order to find your thing, you have to go outside of your comfort zone, try something a bit new, get a little uncomfortable. And so, I would like to offer you a challenge now. I want you to turn to someone that you haven't met already. I want you to say hello, find out their name, what they're studying, and one interesting hobby about them. Ready, set, go. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you there, I'm very sorry, but that is the start of a great conversation and a great friendship. And something that I like to do is that I really like to reward people that manage to go outside their comfort zone, because that takes a lot of courage. So, my lovely colleague Erin is in the aisle and she has some exclusive limited edition ARC Find Your Thing socks available. And if you can put your hand up and tell me the name, the degree, and the hobby of the person that you introduce yourself to, you and the person can win a pair of socks. Yes. Nice. She likes drawing. Beautiful. You can both have socks. Well done. Two more people. Yes. Nice. Amazing. We have a knitting and crochet society. I hope you've already joined. Uh, I'll take one more. Uh, maybe the gentleman up the back with the backwards cap. What was the hobby? Painting. Gosh. Creative students in the law faculty. Maybe we need a uh, something. Yeah, you can work on that, Andrew. All right. <laughs> um, it's now my pleasure to tell you about lots of the fun things available at ARC. I'm going to go pretty fast because I know you're short on time. So <gasps> the first thing is that we have over 300 clubs and societies at ARC. Um, you've already heard about two very excellent ones, Criminology Society and the Law Society. There's 298 other excellent societies that you can be a part of. My personal favorite, Taylor Swift Society. They're called the Unswifties, like UNSW if, like that's pretty cute, right? Um, but I also highly recommend the Hot Girl Summer Society and the Frozen Desserts Appreciation Society. They just eat ice cream all the time. 
We have lots of really fun events on. You've already seen the wonders of O Week, but next week we have Welcome Week. We have a massive party tonight, one of the largest student parties in the Southern Hemisphere, way bigger than a sandstone institution that you chose not to go to. Good job, you Sid, you suck. Um, <laughs> We have a festival of sport called Day of Play, Stress Less Week, Good Deed Days, heaps of really fun events that you can throw yourself into, grab some free food and have a really fun time along the way. We do a lot of sport and we know from your reading prior to coming here that you watch Legally Blonde and in that movie I believe that they say exercise releases endorphins, endorphins make you happy and happy people don't kill their husbands. Um, so in order to keep the husbands of the world alive, you should play some sport. Um, there's sports clubs, there is social sport, there's intervarsity, there's heaps of opportunities for you to get involved and get your body moving. We also love people to get involved in our projects and programs. There's a huge different array of them. They're really flexible. You can do a short time commitment, a long time commitment, whatever suits you. Check them all out. Find time to do them. You'll get a lot out of them, I promise. And at ARC, we talk more and more about student wellness. And I think this is a really important moment to just pause to say that uh, it's good to think about the expression, you can't pour from an empty cup. We like people to know that they should really be able to look after themselves and build the skills that they need to look after themselves before they're able to really readily look after the people around them, which is ultimately what we all want to do. So we want you to build up the skill set, the tool set, and the mindset that sits around your own personal wellness, and we do this through events and resources, and that way you're able to look after yourself and you can look after others better as well with things like mental health first aid training. And that brings me to help, which is an important one as well, which is to say that for 90% of students, your time at uni will be easy breezy, you'll follow the, the straight path and it'll be really great by the end. But for 10% of students, things don't go to plan. And that is not your fault. A lot of things come up in your life that you don't control and that you have to respond to. But I want you to know that this university is really committed to making sure that our students don't just survive, but that they absolutely thrive while they're here. And one of the best ways to do that is to ask for help when you need it. At ARC in particular, we have two full-time lawyers and their job is to advocate on behalf of students in anything in your life. It doesn't have to be to do with uni. It could be to do with employment. It could be to do with visas. It could be to do with tenancy. If you're having an issue that involves um, legal and advocacy things, please come talk to us. It's our pleasure to look after you. And then we have an expression at ARC which is heaps more because we do heaps of other things to make your time at uni the best it can be. We do trips and tours all over Sydney. We have free stationery. We can help you fix your bike and you can do room hire through, through us as well. So that's all I have time for today. But if you haven't already joined up to ARC, it's free to join. You can scan the QR code now, join up online and then come visit someone in a shirt like this and they can give you a membership pack. They can give you uh, a sticker on the back of your student cards and you can let the good times roll. And if you already have joined, and I'm thinking that a lot of you have because it's the Thursday of O-Week. Um, I highly recommend following us on Instagram because we will keep you across all of the fun things, all of the free food, all of the good times. I hope you have a wonderful time at UNSW and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. The support video, yeah. Oh, okay, we're good. The one thing that I meant to do now is to introduce this support video, which is a really good segue from what I just mentioned before about the different ways that the university is able to help you. You're going to need help or your friends or people you know at university are going to need help at different points in their degree for very different things. They can range from you might need help um, getting a nutritious meal um, because you're short on money one week, or you might need help figuring out your essays, or you might need help figuring out how to connect your phone to the university Wi-Fi, which is an ongoing issue that I face, so don't be afraid to ask someone about that. Um, but this video summarizes a whole bunch of the services available to you. Hey there, welcome to UNSW. My name is Laura Montague and I'm the chair of your student organization, ARC, and I'm so delighted to welcome you to UNSW. UNSW is a place where you can learn, grow, discover and thrive, and there are so many amazing services to help you do just that. The Nucleus is the home of student services, here to guide you from enrolment to graduation. Drop in online or in person if you have any questions around working through your degree, your student record, fees, ID cards or documentation. We'll be able to help or point you in the right direction. The Student Support Advisors are here to help students navigate the pressures and stresses of life, including university life. The team takes a personalised approach, assisting students there through a wide range of matters such as financial hardship or accommodation issues. And with general information regarding student visas, relationship difficulties, as well as personal and health-related concerns. 
Sections with student support advisors are free and confidential, and students can receive support in person or virtually. For more information or to book an appointment, just search UNSW Support Advisors. Academic skills can help students with any aspect of their academic work, including planning and writing assignments, reading and note-taking, presentations, critical thinking and many others. Uh, this service is available to all students at any point of their degree. The academic skills team meets with students by individual consultations, workshops or in general education and faculty courses. They also provide heaps of study skills and resources online on the Academic Skills website. Equitable Learning Service is a confidential service that supports students living with disabilities, medical or mental health conditions, or anyone with care or responsibilities. The role of ELS is to ensure that you are provided with appropriate flexibility and educational support throughout your university studies. The service is free and confidential and there is no need to tell your faculty what your health condition is. The team at Equitable Learning Services will work with you on a personalised Equitable Learning Plan with specific educational adjustments. Mental ill health is common. No matter what your concern, UNSW is committed to supporting students who experience any form of mental health distress. Support is available through Mental Health Connect, whether you're in Australia or studying overseas. Mental Health Connect will assess your needs and assist you to access the most appropriate counsellor, psychologist, advisor or doctor. If you need support after hours, there's also an after hours line you can call. Head to Mental Health Connect website for more information. UNSW Employability can help you to build your personal and professional identity to discover, launch and grow your future career. There are career coaches available for online appointments to assist you in navigating your employability journey at UNSW and beyond. For more information, go to employability.unsw.edu.au. ARC is your official student organisation. We look after everything outside the classroom, from an epic O week to over 300 clubs, sustainability programs and creative opportunities, student wellness and sports on campus, and so much more. The gist is, we want you to experience everything. Your first step to an incredible experience at UNSW is to join ARC today. So there you have it. There are heaps of ways that you can access opportunities and support at UNSW. See you on campus. All right, uh, we're now towards the very last uh, segment this morning. I'd like to invite the student representatives to come up and join us on stage. Um, and I'll even, yep. The, um, this is the QR code. Um, you may have uh, already sent in some questions before, but if you haven't, please scan it and type online. We'll, we'll be going on those that are receiving the most likes. So if someone's already written a question and it's your question, just like it and it'll go to the top of the pile. Um, I'm quite conscious that, uh, <laughs> for one reason or another, we're a little bit over time. Um, it's a real pleasure though to introduce to us, I'm just gonna move from this now, um, to also introduce um, Shanze um, Stephanie in place of Reese uh, from uh, the Criminology Society, Shanze from the Law Society and Jess from the Law Review. Law Review was mentioned in Philippa's uh, speech as sort of the sort of review, the show that uh, the faculty uh, students put on every year. It's a fantastic night out. Uh, and uh, it's great to have a stu student voices on the panel to help us answer your questions. So, um, uh, Tamara, do I go back to the Slido code or should I stick? Yeah, I'm going to go to that. Great. Okay, oh, still got it. All right. Um, the first question is. Um, the first question. The first question. I don't the first question is, what makes UNSW stand out to employers over other universities, both in Australia and internationally? Um, a couple of things, uh, and it will really depend on the programs. So if I start with the Bachelor of Criminology and Criminal Justice, as Elise mentioned, that's distinctive um, in that it really is a joint program between the expertise of social sciences research in the Faculty of Arts, Design and Architecture, and also specialist criminology knowledge connected to academics who are also in law. So, th so the joint nature of it 
meaning that it's not simply placed in one faculty or another. It's, it, it is a program for which law and justice is the program authority, but really it is a collaborative offering across two faculties is a distinctive part of it. Plus, there is also anything else, Elise, that you would add to that? Would it be the um, final year capstone stage? Yeah, so there's the capstone that really gets you looking outwards um, to how you can apply what you've learnt to issues that are currently you know, challenging criminal and, and uh, social justice areas. Um, and you know, I, I would encourage everyone to take advantage of the work integrated learning opportunities as well that also enhance employability. Yeah. Great. And I think the uh, answer from the law point of view, uh, which Helen has said she's happy for me to take, is our method of teaching, and this does go to, there's a question later on about are all law lectures recorded, and so the first news flash is that we don't have lectures. Um, so this kind of method of delivery is quite unusual for us. As I indicated before, law classes are all interactive. Um, and you know that develop skills which I think are very distinctive whenever I talk to the firms or the profession more generally. It's the ability of UNSW law students really to hold their own. Um, you know, and that can, as Helen said in her remarks, be a little daunting at first. We take that in quite baby steps at the start, but really the idea is not that you will go to a class and sit there and write down stuff that um, I or Helen will say. You'll be listening to the entire discussion which you have prepared for, looking Second question, see how I'm trying to maximise the time here. By everyone having some familiarity with the readings and the topic and coming along with questions to ask about what they didn't understand, thoughts or reactions to it. Helen, would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, that's what I was talking about in, in my opening remarks. The way to prepare for your first classes um, or the first week is to go to Moodle. Moodle is the source of truth. Look for the reading guide if you haven't already seen it and do the readings for the first class. Um, do show up having done the readings for the first class, setting good habits early. Also have a look at the assessment the, the assessment structure of the course, the details about the assessment, because assessment is often talked about in the first class, and so if you have any burning questions, there are plenty of opportunities to ask them, but you might want to ask those in the first class. But going to class ready with, by having done the readings is my number one. And also just a quick comment is that you often need a textbook for your subjects and it can be quite hard to get your textbooks um, when there's a really strong demand for you know 200 students in the same course looking for the same textbook. So um, UNSW has got a great textbook shop but also search online as well if, if UNSW textbooks um, uh, sold out of that particular book because it can be quite hard to do your readings without the textbook because they might not be available online. Absolutely. Um, thanks very much, all three of you. I think we've answered our lectures being recorded. The answer is no. Um, and, um, yep. There's a question there about, um, is there a guide to what law courses we should be studying in each term? Yes, there is. That's very helpful. We have study, sample study plans. You can access them on um, our website, the UNSW Law and Justice website, and through my law. There is a standard um, sort of process, um, a plan for the courses that you would take in order for the first few years. It will change, generally, it doesn't matter which uh, combined degree you'll be doing, you'll be doing the same courses through sort of the first two years and then it might sort of change a bit to accommodate the requirements of your other degree. But it's not a mystery. We've, we've planned this, we've thought this through. Look for the study plan for your degree, um, especially even if it's not on the handbook. And then if you can't find it, contact me and that's my job to give you advice on how best to plan the progression of your degree. Thanks, Helen. And it matters uh, because we teach on the assumption that you have studied earlier courses and will know that material. It's a, it's, it's a stacking. And I also have friends who didn't graduate at the time when they thought they could because they didn't follow the progression. So make sure you check in on that if you've deviated from the standard. Um, the next question is a great one to pass to uh, Shanze, which is what do details, uh, when do details about the law camp come out? So the law camp details are already out. All of, our event at the UNS all of our events at the UNSW Law Society are marketed on Facebook, so if you make a Facebook profile, if you don't already have one, just like our Facebook page, it's just called UNSW Law Society. Um, tickets come out in week two, so if you follow the event page um, and keep an eye out, you'll get all of the notifications of when tickets are being released, and the actual camp is run at the end of week four. Excellent, thank you. Um, is there a criminology one, Steph Stephanie, or not? if not a camp, what's the big thing criminology uh, society students should be looking forward to? 
Um, so something the Criminology Society is doing, um, it's actually in collaboration with the Law Society, it's a Careers in Criminal Laws and Criminal Justice Night um, that's running in week seven. Friday, I believe, we're going to get a bunch of guest speakers and panelists to come in and talk about um, how they entered the criminal law or criminology industry and what's it like to work there. And then there's also going to be some catering and drinks uh, provided as well, so definitely come along to that. So that's a fantastic example of um, the answer. Oh, the questions keep moving around. I'm not fast enough, which was there was a question up there before. Was, how do I join Crimsoc uh, and why? And I think you've given an example. There's social things, there's nice drinks, and also you know, a chance to hear from people who are working that you, you know, might learn about career paths. But how do people find you if they haven't already? So the best way to find us is also through Facebook. Um, definitely like our Facebook page. If you haven't signed up at our stall during a week already, um, you can go onto our website, it's just unswcrimsock.com, and then uh, you can just fill out the membership form there. Uh, great. Uh, I'm going to come to Philippa and ask you to answer two questions, because you touched on both of these opportunities overseas, and also at what stage of the degree you can begin mooting. Um, what stage of our degree can we participate in mooting? Probably the easiest question to answer right now. Um, at any point in your degree, can you start mooting? There's um, mooting that's targeted towards specific stages because um, they'll be based on the, the types of law that you've been learning in that particular stage. Um, so for example, in first year, the scenario will be based around torts, which is one of the subjects you would do. Um, so definitely get involved um, at the beginner level if that's what you're really interested in, but you can also um, participate in advance you know, in your later um, years of your degree if you want to pick it up then as well. Um, in terms of participating in, um, uh, in going uh, um, uh, looking into international opportunities, I found pretty much everything on the UNSW Law um, and Justice's webpage. There's lots of different um, tabs for internships and um, uh, exchange and other overseas experiences and things like that. Um, and as I said before in, in my speech, I found my own opportunity um, through word of mouth um, and I approached the Law and Justice School about it and they helped me to have that recognised. So mostly the UNSW website. Wonderful, thanks. We've only got time uh, for a few more. Uh, Helen. Um, I'll take the top one. Should we purchase hard copy textbooks for our in-person exams? That's a tricky question. You're not going to be overly disappointed to hear that in the law program and the criminology program, we don't actually have in-person exams at the moment, thanks to COVID. Um, so you don't have to buy a hard copy of the textbook. You can get an e-book because our exams are online in the sense that you're at home. This is currently, this is, this is the current version. It changes, might change next year. So an e-book would be, would be fine. Rules around uh, class attendance and participation. There is an expectation that students attend 100% of classes, but we understand that life happens. And so we have a minimum sort of threshold of 80%. Um, we do expect you to attend at least 80% of your timetabled classes. That doesn't mean that if you've missed some classes and then you you feel like you're gonna fall short that you need to come to class sick, absolutely you don't do that. You can then just apply for special consideration if you're gonna exceed that 20% um, acceptable absences. And all of that information should be available in, on your Moodle page for the course and spelling it out. If you've got questions, please ask your teacher. Um, uh, how many subjects you take each term? Again, the, the study planners that Helen mentioned before will say that three courses is a full load. Um, uh, there's a question, I just want two more really, which is one for Shanze, how, many, how can first years get involved in Law Society and its events? And then I'd love to go to Jess and just hear a bit about Law Review and then we'll wrap it up. Um, there's lots of things you can do as a first year student to get involved. So some of the things that we have is firstly, sign up to be a member. So you can go to our O-Week store down in Main Walkway near the Law Building and sign up there. You can also sign up to be a Law Plus mentee. So Philippa was mentioning this when she was speaking to you guys. Um, you can ask all of these questions and more to your Law Plus mentors and you get to work um, in a group of about 10 students and you get to understand what to do and how to navigate law school as a first year student. Um, other ways you can get involved is becoming a wellbeing warrior, so we have sign-ups opening for that as well. Um, attending law camp and law launch, that's all happening in week two, as I mentioned before. Um, and also mooting, so anyone who's interested in mooting, we have a demonstration moot happening at 2pm in the moot court in the law building today. So if you want to know what mooting is and you're interested in getting involved, definitely go and have a look at that. Excellent plug there. Uh, Jess, there's a question around Law Review and what's so special about Law Review? 
Yeah, um, so Law Review, which is R-E-V-U-E, -E, um, I believed, genuinely believed for an embarrassingly long time that it was a misspelling of review, but no, it's actually, as both Philippa and Andrew mentioned, um, a comedy sketch show that involves dancing, singing, acting, and a live band. So if you were interested in any of that, and you don't have to be good at it, any of it, there were a lot of flailing limbs, mostly mine, during show. So it's always a nice opportunity to come and just try something new. I think that's what makes it special. You don't have to be amazing at any of those things. You get to meet people because we have rehearsals running. Um, we've got one today, just an open rehearsal at 3.30 in Matthews, um, which is a nice opportunity to see what it's about, what it's like. Um, we've got those rehearsals and you get to meet people that do law and those who don't do law. And because of the time that you spent with them, you're able to really, like, make a community and just be a part of a community so that's I'd say what's special and just because I'm here for the slightly more introverted people there are also jobs in law review that are not on the stage yes of course there are so if you like painting as I heard someone say before or making costumes or making videos or being a part of tech so that's backstage not a part of the light at all you're dressed in black you get to fade away um, if you're interested in any of those things um, you can go to our Facebook page or if you're Gen Z and not Millennials we do have Instagram so you can go on that as well it's UNSW Law Review um, and so with that you'll be able to get a you know a taste of all the different things that we offer wonderful thank you all uh, of you for contributing those thoughts I know there are probably still more questions out there but there's as I say you can't we can't do everything today and we shouldn't do everything today it's just a taster I hope a lot of our presentations have been helpful uh, for you uh, there's a yellow shirts tour leaving uh, now for those who want a tour of campus there's obviously something happening in the moot court for the law students amongst you at 2 p.m. Um, well done if you're a criminology student and did the coffee thing beforehand which is wonderful it's our pleasure to welcome students back on campus we're really excited about the year ahead thank you for joining us here we look forward to getting to know you better bye